Hey, what's up guys? Savage Recover here. Back at another one. So, Little Wayne and Fat Joe ended up doing a stream together on Instagram and this was back on May 28th and Little Wayne has come under some fire for it. So I just wanted to watch it and give my two cents on it. Um, right here in the beginning, he's going to talk about when he came on to cash money and how old he was. And he's also gonna talk about the time that he he shot himself when he was a child. So let's see what he has to say. Weezy! Yo! Yo, your first, is it true this is your first time on IG Live? Yeah, that's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, this the Fat Joe Show, Weezy! That's what I thought it was. I ain't know nothing about that. No, it's the Fat Joe Show. I'm on the Fat Joe Show. That's the first time I'm on the Fat Joe Show. I don't know nothing. I don't even know if I'm even on IG Live. Oh, man. Shout out. did you get on? Like, what age were you when you got on? Uh, I was, I was, I was 10. I was 10 when I, well, I was 8 when I started Jeez. writing. When I, I was 8 when I started rapping. Then I met Stun in there when I was 11. Fuck, since 11 yeah. years old. So what, the world know Weezy since 11 years old. 11, that's when Stunning them had a local, Cash Money was just a local a local record company at the time in New Orleans and, you know, banging through the South at the time. And so I was 11. I lied, told him I was 12 till it was time to sign a contract and found out my real age. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I thought one year older, I thought one year older made such a difference. But then um, I put out my first, my first solo album when I was 14. And after that, everything was history, thank God. So, around this time, at 14 years old, when Lil Wayne dropped his first solo album, he had his first child. He had his oldest daughter. And in that moment, he realized that he really had to go for it. If he wanted to get his family into a better situation, he had to work that much harder because now he had someone that was dependent on him. And that's a good thing. Like him having a family or having a daughter drove him to want to be more and to make more money and to be able to provide a life for his kid. And I cannot be mad at him about this. <laughs> um, the shit is right. So when you were young, I remember hearing the story that you shot yourself by mistake. Yeah. You, how old was you when that happened, Weez? 12. 12. And you just missed your heart by a little. Two and inches. the reason I'm asking you that because it was actually a cop who saved your life, true? It was very true, a cop named Uncle Bob. So he, he came through, he saved your life, right? What and happened was, what happened was this was this where I got shot at was the projects in my in my neighborhood. It was the projects in my hood. It was something like the projects. That's what it was. We didn't have a name for it though. With, with that said though, that was his area. That was his, you know, his he that was where he worked at. He knew everybody in that area. He knew every kid in that area, knew every parent in that area. So when he heard it come over his radio, he was just like, Wait, what? What that was that he he heard the, the shot, he heard the uh whatever the call come over his radio. So he was off duty. He took it upon himself to just come to yeah yeah he took it he since he he knew the he knew the area so well he was like he wanted to see who the hell it was so he took it upon himself to come through and when he came through he noticed I was still on the floor bleeding and he noticed the whole the cops was checking the house and rambling through the house and he he took he took real pride and he took real he was real upset in the fact that I, a young kid was still on the floor with a hole in his chest and the cops jumping all over me just going to look through the house. So he took it upon himself to pick me up, put me in his arm. He screamed at somebody to come drive the drive the cop car. They drove the car. He sat in the back seat with me. He held me in his arms. He bust through the hospital doors. He put made sure they it was no waiting. He put me straight into the emergency room. They they patched me up and he made sure I lived. Once he know oh, he would not even he would he not never, even let he would not even let me pay for his dinner, man. <laughs> that's crazy. He was just. <laughs> So, what I think a lot of people are get are uh, getting the heat, like uh, giving heat to Little Wayne. Little Wayne has said stuff uh, 
like this stuff before. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is like as you can see, he grew up in in Louisiana, and a police officer, a white police officer, was off duty, came and saved him, and he was mad that the police were more, more worried about looking if there was drugs or if there anything else than helping him live. So he made sure at like he made sure that he took him to the hospital and he lived. See, that's a good cop. Uncle Bob is a good cop. At the end of the day, no one can take any way, anything away from Uncle Bob. Like there needs to be more cops like that. Straight straight put like point blank there needs to be better cops like uncle bob uncle bob saved a, a boy's life on when he wasn't even being paid for it he just decided that it was his neighborhood and those were his his people so he needed to be there and because of this experience you can probably see why little wayne has such a positive outlook when it comes to police or the 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 comments that he's made that has gotten him backlash in in the spotlight but you also have to remember that little wayne got arrested for a gun charge in new york and he did go to the he did go to prison now granted he has money and he got special privileges harassment but one day i was visiting my mother in the projects and my son choked okay he's just a baby and so I'm running out the building. And if I, you know, I think about it now, the hosp the, the nearest hospital was 10 minutes away. He would have died while I was driving. So I'm editing <clears throat> this right now. And while I was recording, uh, my dogs decided to start playing. So you can't hear the audio of Fat Joe and Wayne. But pretty much what it said is Fat Joe said that his son was choking he was at his mom's house in the projects and he started choking and he ran out the building to take his kid to the hospital and he says in hindsight the hospital was like 10 minutes away and even if i would have drove there my son would have died on the way there but as i was coming up a cop pulled up and the 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 female officer gave her gave his son the heimlich and he lived so right here, he's talking about he was born with the drive, but he also is mentioning how the men in his life played an intricate role into his life. Little Wayne is dropping a lot of good knowledge about his life and the way he thinks and what made him successful. I really, I really owe a lot of that drive, a lot of that, people, you know, is, uh, you got to be born with it. But at the same time, somebody got to be, you got to have somebody that know how to steer it in the proper direction. And I owe all that to Thunder, man. That man, he never quit. He never quit. He never quit. He never, never say never. He never say die. And I learned that at a very young age. And it still haven't left. See, another important thing I think is in this is that he said that Stunner, which was a male figure, we all know that there's questionable things about about Birdman, like that's regardless. He was saying that him being mentored by somebody, uh, by a male, that that helped push him to where he's at. He was able to go farther with direction. Man, that, that was my next question. My next question was, who inspired you? Man, all day and every day, all day and every day, it was stunning, man. I, I had I had lost my father on Rabbit at such a young age, and at that at that at that very age, Thunder told my I mean Rabbit told my mama, uh, my mom didn't want me to rap. She you know she knew I was smart, she knew I was very intelligent. She was like, I need you to be a doctor, a lawyer, or something like that. You're too smart. But Rabbit, he was like, Nah, this boy is really really good with his rap shit. He was like, listen, he's really, really good. And if you want him to be anything, we, we the most the, the best thing we should do is let him go with baby. And she was like, You you sure about that? He was like, I'm very sure. He needs to be with baby in him. And so I with that said, when I lost Rabbit, Stunner became more more than a manager, more than a a, a, a cash money for he was a father figure. So 
there's another great lesson right there. His father, Rabbit, saw the potential in him, and his mom did not want him to be able to be a rapper. And Rabbit pushed his mother in to let him go in that direction. Had Rabbit never said this, we might not have ever heard of Lil Wayne. I don't know about you, but a lot of the rappers nowadays, it, they wouldn't exist if it wasn't for, for Lil Wayne. Lil, Lil Wayne has like some of the most tracks. I think he literally has the most features out of any artist. Like, I, all of the 2000s, multiple hits was Lil Wayne. Like, Lil Wayne really has the biggest the biggest block of music i think in the rap genre and it's all it all like he had two good males in his life unfortunately rabbit was killed and he lost rabbit but if it wasn't for rabbit saying he needs to go with with birdman then wayne wayne we would never have a wayne or a wheezy we would have never got the card of two or the card of three and then Birdman and Rabbit saw the potential in Wayne, and they both did what was necessary. Like, that's the type of men that we need in society. Like, we need more men to help steer these kids in the right direction. With that said, I looked up to him. I looked up to everything he did and the way he did it. And the way he did things and the way he do things is nonstop. He's committed to everything, whatever it is. He commit everything to it. They could be playing you on a, a game. You know how we hear these stories about Jordan and how competitive he is and anything playing quarters and all that. It's not a competitive thing with Stunner. It's just a it's a commitment thing with Stunner. If he commit to it, he's committed. And I learned that at a very, very young age and he never stopped working. I'm talking about somebody that didn't even rap. I was, I was like, why is he going to the studio? Why is this man going to the studio every day and night? He's not even getting behind the mic. It was that just a drive, and he still do it to this day. <laughs> to this so a good lesson to to learn from this is that Little Wayne got his drive and learned to be in the studio constantly and not be in the clubs to make music because that's what his job was and that's what was going to propel him farther, and he learned that from Birdman. So had Rabbit not seen potential in him we wouldn't have had Wayne if Birdman wouldn't have had the drive and the seen the potential in Wayne Wayne wouldn't have been able to mimic that same drive and he wouldn't have been able to steer Wayne in the right direction like I can say this for myself that I was doing dumb shit my whole life and my stepdad though even though me and him didn't get along even though that we had our trouble he didn't like me because I was an asshole. But at the end of the day, that man worked two jobs and paid child support to his ex-wife for my brothers. And he supported me and my sister. And it wasn't until I got sober that I was able to realize how much he actually did for me. And had I not seen a man literally work himself to where his legs stopped working because he refused to get surgery because he didn't want us to lose our place. He didn't want us to be homeless. So he worked and worked and worked and worked until his, his back broke and his legs no longer worked for me and my sister and my brothers. And I got a lot of the work ethic and a lot of the drive that I have from my stepdad, from watching him do it, like watching a man go to Stouffer's and work. 60 70 hours in a week and then when he got off work he would go and work at the trailer park we lived at as a maintenance guy working 30 40 hours there my dad was always working always and if it wasn't for me seeing that then i wouldn't have had the exact same drive that he ended up having and like having good men and strong men in our lives really puts an impression on kids and i was really angry when i was a kid because my mom and my dad divorced but it wasn't until i got sober and i could look back at my life that i could see that the things that i i i should have liked and should have needed were there i just was unwilling to look at it and to actually do anything with it I was stuck in like it was unfair that my parents got divorced and I didn't want to live with my dad and I, I didn't really like living 
with my mom because I was angry and pissed off. So I was a dick. And a lot of that's my fault because I just did stupid stuff. But hindsight's twenty twenty. Like, clearly, you're not going to realize this stuff when you're in the middle of doing it. But, like, now that I'm older and I'm sober, these things are what made me who I am. And a lot of having my stepdad in my life and giving me watching a man literally work himself to death and having drive had it not been for him i wouldn't have been able to go from being a felon and a junkie and a criminal to being middle class within a five-year period and i'm still striving to try to do more and get farther in life because i do have kids like when i had my son i started really taking stuff way more seriously than i was prior and little wayne did the same thing with his daughter and i can respect that i can totally respect that now tell me what you guys think tell me if if you think that little wayne sold out or if he's wrong or if he said something that is actually knowledgeable or if he's dropping gems just tell me what you guys think subscribe hit the bell share this video for me hit the like if you don't like it hit the dislike leave me a comment tell me what you think you guys can always hit me up at savage red recovery gmail.com and till next time guys salute